Down here. Yes, I'm on. Good morning to all of you. Um, just as a heads up, an owl is joining us later in worship. There was always the question mark of whether or not it might be a turkey buzzard. But um, we are very alive, so an owl is present. Um, let us pause in a time of quiet as we listen to our special music as it brings us into the holy. Our worship this morning is in the spirit of indigenous peoples. Sometimes um, as we think about this weekend, we also think about it as Columbus Day. But in this era, we are thinking about it from both directions, both about the indigenous peoples of the land in which we live, as well as those who we think of as being the explorers of the world. Next Sunday, we are hoping to have a blessing of smaller critters. Um, and so this is an invitation to all of you to bring critters with you to, with, with you to worship. Um, uh, oftentimes when we talk about a blessing of animals, people think in terms of cats and dogs. This time around, we are thinking in terms of 
those other critters that often go forgotten that have four legs, or if they have two, um, two legs, they need to have feathers. We are intentionally um, trying to avoid those things with many more legs, as well as those things with many fewer legs. But um, so I'm hoping that on next Sunday we see turtles and rabbits and lizards and hamsters and I don't know what all. So I'm hoping to look at it and see a whole lot of maybe cages or um, however you're transporting your favorite other companion and we'll include them as part of a blessing. Gail, can I get you to stand? Um, Gail is continuing to sell Boscov's coupons for um, the 18th. Um, sometimes we need a reminder of what face to look for. Um, so see Gail if you're interested. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. Good morning. You might recognize me from the several slides that have been on this morning. <clears throat> and I'm here for the same reasons, just quick reminders of the various ways uh, that we need some help that you can be of service to the church. One is the upcoming search committee for our settled pastor. If you have a nomination that you'd like considered, again, that can be yourself or someone else, please see Katie Bieber. And um, we'd like to have those by the end of October. Two, um, office space. We are um, trying to figure out how to better utilize the space of Main Creek, specifically to have a more functional pastor's office and main office. Gail and Ruth Ann, Gail again, Ruth Ann, I don't think I don't see her today. Uh, please, they are already part of the committee. If you would like to join them, please see them. Again, it's to brainstorm ideas, consider how this might best work, what will the layout look like, and then notice that it's called a task force because once you're done, you're done. And then finally, uh, our third need is for what was formerly the property committee, which we are rebranding as the handy helpers. So this will be more as an as needed basis uh, when projects come up uh, and we need some help, you know, I don't know, fixing plumbing, those sorts of small fixes, or bigger fixes where we need contractor bids. So if you are handy with any of those, we need you. And we are also looking for someone who isn't particularly handy uh, to take care of the communications piece. You'd be the point person people would come to, so if it was me, you know, come see me if you have a concern, and then I'd talk to whoever would best fit that need. So if you're interested in uh, helping with the maintenance aspect of church, uh, please see me. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Thank you. Any other announcements? If not, let us pause and as we hear the bells ring, we are reminded and our community is reminded that we are here and ready to worship God. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And so we worship in the name of the God who is creator, the God who is Christ, and the God who is spirit. We are going to be um, having our call to worship in the spirit of Native American spirituality. And so what I invite you all to do is to stand. And initially you're going to start by um, facing forward, but then as we go through the call, we'll be turning in each direction. 
So the first way we'll end up turning is that way, which is east. It helps that the sun is up there. Um, ultimately, we'll do a complete circle, ending up looking upwards. So our worship this morning borrows from Native American spirituality. If you are comfortable standing, please do so facing the front. And as the prayer progresses, we'll turn in a clockwise direction, facing the direction of that speaker. In Native American spirituality, the circle represents both completion and continuity. Each direction offers meaning. Each is given a color and there is a reference to the wind and the season that comes out of it. At the end of each session, your response is, come Holy Spirit, come. And so we begin, come Holy Spirit, come. We turn east, we turn right and face east. We welcome the color of this direction, yellow for the morning star. We thank you for your creation and welcome, for the eagle which soars ever upward in praise of God, for your lessons calling us to balance of mind in discernment. We pray for your spirit of illumination and far-sighted vision. Help us to love you and one another with all our heart, mind, and soul. Amen. Holy Spirit, come. We turn right and face south. We welcome the color of this direction, red the hue of revelation. We thank you for your creation and welcome, for the turtle close to the earth and intuitive, for your lessons calling us to balance of body in renewal. We pray for your spirit of innocence, trust, and love. Help us to open our eyes to the sacredness of every living thing as we pray together. We welcome the color of this direction, black, still, and quiet. We thank you for your creation and welcome, for the bear, mighty and purposeful, for your lessons calling us to balance of emotion in wisdom and honesty. We pray for your spirit of introspection, for seeing within. Give us your strength and the courage to endure as we pray together. We turn to face north. We welcome the color of this direction, white, of clarity and brightness. We thank you for your creation and welcome, for the buffalo, strong and nurturing, for your lessons calling us to balance and harmony with brothers and sisters everywhere. We pray for your spirit of wisdom and grace. Give us the goodness of the ages as we pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Having completed the circle, we look up to God who cleanses the earth with snow, wind, and rain, to Jesus Christ who fills us with the wideness of mercy and embraces us all, and to the Holy Spirit who inspires us. Holy Spirit, come.
as we enter time of confession. Um, I want to start with a word of acknowledgement. Most of you are aware that my particular background is that of the United Church of Christ. And so, you, so I'm a little more aware of the ministry and history of the United Church of Christ than that of the Evangelical Lutheran Church. One of the sad pieces of United Church of Christ history is that our ancestors include that of the pilgrims. And so on this Indigenous Peoples Day, we think about um, the disrespect and pain that we caused to the Indigenous peoples of the northeastern part of this country as we settled. The United Church of Christ also had an extensive ministry and outreach to Hawaii. And so we have caused a lot of heartache in Hawaii. And thankfully our denomination has officially asked for apologies. But how do you acknowledge pain and suffering? Um, and so we continue to have ongoing ministries in Hawaii, but part of it is about reconciliation. Another region where we've had extensive ministries, past and present, is among the Dakota and Lakota Indians of North, South Dakota, and Minnesota, that region. And so as we enter this time of confession, it's acknowledging the pain that our denomination caused, often by people who thought they were doing right, but who in time we discovered were not. So we take time to acknowledge that we do not always do as God would have us do, we confess this to God, seeking God's forgiveness. Today, we use a prayer prepared by the Reformed Church to respect Native Americans. Let us pray together. Creator, forgive us. The earth is yours and everything that is in it. But we forget. In our arrogance, we think we own it. In our greed, we think we can steal it. In our ignorance, we worship it. In our thoughtlessness, we destroy it. We forget that you created it to bring praise and joy to you, that you gave it as a gift for us to steward, for us to enjoy, for us to see more clearly your beauty and your majesty. God is the one who created all that is and saw that it was good. God loves life, all life. God offers new beginnings. Be assured, this includes you, yourselves. Thanks be to God.
Our faith calls us to show generosity beyond our own homes and families. In effect, supporting God's work in the world. In October, Maiden Creek Church is especially mindful of the ministry given by the organization known as Keystone Military Family. As you think about your giving, we invite you to give for the work and mission of this congregation as well as Keystone Military Families. See your bulletin on the screen for some of the ways individuals can support the life and mission of this congregation. And however you give, thank you. You are helping to make for a better world. Let us pray. O oh God, receive our gifts and bless them so that they may be used to spread our, your ministry in and though our church. Amen. In just a couple minutes, we will be having um, Peggy of speaking of those couple minutes. We have a special guest with us, Peggy, um, and Peggy has a friend. And I could talk, but I think it's better that Peggy do the talking. are not a bat. Up. We've talked about this. You're not a bat. <laughs> All the way back here. There we go. They're not housebreakers. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. My name is Peggy and this is Gabriel. We call him Gabby for short. And I'm from Red Creek Wildlife Center. Red Creek Wildlife Center is a wildlife rehabilitation center. We take in injured, orphaned, and sick wild animals from Pennsylvania. Everything from little hummingbirds to eagles, from tiny little baby bunnies to a white-tailed deer fawn and turtle snakes. If it gets hurt or it's orphaned, we take care of them until they can take care of themselves again and we put them back out into the wild. Every once in a while, we end up with an animal that can't be set free. And those animals get to live at Red Creek forever and ever, as long as they're comfortable and they're not in pain. But we give them jobs. Everybody gets put to work. Gabriel has had a job with Red Creek for almost 30 years. That's how old he is. He is a foster dad for baby owls that come in. He is also an ambassador, and he goes out to schools, to churches, and to different groups, and we teach people about wildlife. I love coming to a community of faith because I get to give a slightly different message than our normal environmental talks. Because see, when I bring Gabby out, what I see in the audience is awe. 
I see awe in your faces and joy. I see joy in your face. And I love that he can instill that. And a couple things that people comment all the time is they'll say, thank you, because I have never in my life saw an owl up close. I've never seen an owl. And now they got to see an owl. And that brings them awe and joy. When I first started rehabilitating wildlife, every animal that came in the door brought me awe and joy. A blue jay, oh, look how beautiful it is. Now it's like another eagle in the back. When, when we see things over and over and over again, we have a tendency to start not recognizing its specialness anymore. So it's good for me to come out here and see that awe and joy because it reminds me how special that is. And I have people who say to me, how do I, I go out in the woods all the time and I never see an owl. I know they live there, I hear them at night, but I can never see them. And if you go out and you're looking for them up in the trees, you'll never see them. They're so camouflaged and so subtle. Picture this bird against the trunk of a tree and you'll never see it because it'll stay still and quiet. But how you can find an owl is by looking for what it has created. Owls swallow their prey whole, and what they can't digest, they form into a pellet in their throat, and the pellet consists of fur and bones, and they cough it up and it lays on the ground, and where they sleep during the day, the ground becomes covered with these pellets, and they look like little logs of fur. And then the rain comes and it washes the fur away and it leaves a white glistening area of tiny little bones. And it's actually what the owl created because it put it there. Now that you've found that, you can look through it and you've learned two things. You've learned where it lives and you've learned what it eats. And now you can look up and maybe, just maybe, you might catch a glimpse of the owl. And I had a gentleman one time came up to me and he said, I never believed that owls existed. And I'm like, why? He goes, because I never saw one before. <laughs> you know, everybody does that. You know, how many things in this life do you believe in that you've never seen for real? Have you ever seen a koala bear in real life? No, we see them on TV, we see them in pictures, we see people talk about them that work with them and, ha and have seen them. You know that that's faith to believe that they exist from the evidence and witnesses of other people? This guy did not believe that Alice existed until he actually saw it for himself. And that's, he needed that kind of faith. And we live with that every single day. I call God the creator. It's just my name for him. Like, Gabby's got a lot of names. Gabriel, Gabby. God has a lot of names, too, and I just happen to refer to him as the creator. And I like to look for him by what he created. Take this out, for instance. In everything that the creator has created, up. you are not a bat. Come on. Do you want to hoot for me? Do you want to hoot? Sometimes you will. So you take this owl. It is a creation of, of the creator. It is a creation of God. And you can see a spark of the creator just by learning about him. First of all, he has these huge eyes, and they are packed with rods and cones that gather light that we can't see, that gather colors of the light spectrum we can't see at all. He can see things we can't see because he's built to hunt at night. His ears are large slits on the side of his head. And one is low and forward and the other is up high and back. They're different sizes and different shapes. So one sound hits one ear different than it hits the other. And that enables them to pinpoint a sound in a point of space. So much so that they can be gliding over a field of snow or high grasses, and they can hear a mouse 
scratching, and they can go down and catch it without ever seeing it by hunting with their hearing. Because he can hear things we can't hear. Just like the creator can hear and see things we can't and understand things we can't. At Red Creek, there is uh, cameras outside that are heat sensitive and motion detector and they can see at night. And one night it caught me walking across the parking lot and there, it took three pictures of me, boom, boom, boom. And in one of the pictures, there was an owl flying over my head, like a foot and a half in the air. I never knew it was there until I saw the picture because they fly silently. Their feathers are soft and fluffy and even their wings are fringed so when they glide, they don't cut the air and they don't make any noise at all. So we can see a spark of your creator just by looking at one thing. We, can, we know that we can see things that we can't see, hear things that we can't hear, and move about silently without us even knowing. And we can look at anything, even negative things in life. Um, take a porcupine. Porcupines, we think of the sharp quills that they have and how they can hurt you and, and do a lot of damage. But those porcupines, which you could think of as a negative, are so good at defending the porcupine, he doesn't have to be aggressive at all. When we get a porcupine in that needs rehabilitation because maybe it was hit by a car, it fell out of a tree, they are cooperative and gentle and even sweet because they don't have to be aggressive because their quills are protection enough. So if we look for the creator in anything that's created, and that's the trees and the flowers and the sky and the stars at night and in other people around us, and we focus on looking for those sparks of what is the creator, Do that every day, and your life will, again, be filled with awe and joy. And there's no better life than that. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Thank you Peggy, for sharing Gabrielle's story, for helping us to see part of God's creation. One Question, because this is Native American, or um, worship of the spirit of indigenous people, the owl is particularly sacred to many peoples um, in the Native world. It, it depends on the tribe. Many have different feelings. Um, some of them, the, it's a, a negative foretelling. Um, for others, it's, you know, did you ever hear the wise old owl? No. They're not the brightest bulb in the raptor shambles. <laughs> but um, they, they do tell us about being able to see things that other people can't see and recognize things that other people can't recognize. And to do our goodness in silence. Um, and to camouflage it and not be showy about the good that we do. Thank you. And will we get a chance to talk with you after church? Yes, I will remain. I'm enjoying your service. Thank you. In the, in the meantime, we invite you to go down to our kitchen. Um, you're probably not going to find anything edible down there, but good luck. You're welcome to it if you do. Well, I have his carrier is down there, so that is where I'm headed. And he is being a very good boy. <laughs> he is a boy. He is a human imprint, and that's why he can't be released. Someone him raised him as a baby. He is 30 years old, and he is our mascot. Um, he was even on the Today Show. No one ever mentions I was on the Today Show. <laughs> I was only his perch. Thank you for having so me. So welcome to the Maiden Creek Show. <laughs> and let's share a prayer together. Gracious God, thank you for owls, for owl sight, for all of creation. And we ask for your blessing upon all critters. 
those that fly, those that walk, those that crawl, and those that creep. And so we pray in the name of your Son. Amen. I invite you to claim your seats. The hymn we, which we'll be singing in just a moment um, is probably one of the two best known of hymns coming out of the Native American world that's written by the Lakota peoples. Um, so, in the spirit of the Lakota of peoples, who we also think of as the Sioux, um, let us sing. Christ be with you. Our secret text today reminds us about the circle of life through stories and creation, God's call of Abram, and a final vision in the book of Revelation. Our scriptures. Our scriptures today are from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, 24 and 25, as well as Genesis 15, 1 through 5, and Revelation 21, 1 through 6. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let the earth bring forth creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind, and it was so. God made the wild animals and the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw it was good. And these things, the word of the Lord came in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house will be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, this man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, 
Look toward the heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Holy wisdom, holy word. When we think about... Um, Native American spirituality, we tend to find ourselves thinking very much about um, the closeness to the earth, the closeness to creation that so much of the spirituality seems to reflect and intersect with. One of the pieces we often have to remind ourselves of is that when we talk about Native American we have to be aware that they were literally thousands of tribes, thousands of groups, ways of going about and living life and living the sacred. And as we look back, what we tend to do is we look back with a certain amount of nostalgia, we pick on the, the pieces that speak more closely to um, our hearts and what we've seen or what we believe in and value. Part of what we appreciate though as we look back is the sense of the closeness to the earth. That awareness of living in the midst of the land, not claiming a particular piece, but aware that the whole belongs to the people. This awareness that there are seasons of the year and that seasons come and bring with it um, different conditions. But, and some of them are negative and some of them are positive. But you learn to live with the seasons and to greet and welcome the more positive elements of each season. You and I don't necessarily think of it, but even deserts have seasons. There are cycles that seem to take place. And so as we step into the realm of the native, we think about the four directions, the, the four winds. We think about the four seasons. And invariably with each of the seasons will come a particular creature that is identified with it. And so there are gifts that come. There's this awareness that as one lives a life, one greets the day with prayer, calling in and greets each of the directions for one is aware that not all will be the same throughout one's day. And as one lives with the awareness of the sacred being present, if one ends up taking a life in order to eat, to live, one shows respect to that life. So the sense of rhythm, movement. We will often associate things like um, what we refer to as the peace pipe, but it's really the prayer pipe. And the intent of the prayer pipe is that one puts 
tobacco in it, something that's alive and dried out and ready to be smoked. And there is the ritual of passing it. And it's about praying. It's not just about peace. It's about prayer. And so uh, the pipe will end up being incorporated into all kinds of rituals because the sense is, is that as one prays, the smoke is lifting the prayers up into the heavens. The sacred part of life. Whether one is doing a sweat, whether one is greeting the new day, whether one is going hunting. We know a little bit less about what takes place around the lodges themselves, because again, those who did the writing tended to be mostly out of a patriarchal world. But I'm sure there were elements there as well. And then in the darkness of the night, one looks up at the stars and the heavens, and they become stories. They become the places of ancestors but especially the place of stories. And so I'm going to close with a story. It's not my favorite story, but it features an owl. And so I share the story of the owl and the rabbit and the creator. See, once upon a time, their creator was moving in and around the world and seeing all the animals that had been created, the hedgehog and the porcupine and the muskrat. And the creator said, come, gather. All of you gather with me. And the creator looked at all the animals now gathered about. And the creator said, I made each one of you. in the way that I made you, and each of you is beautiful, and each of you is wonderful, and each of you has gifts. But I have been thinking, I've been thinking that maybe there is one thing you want to change about yourself. And so I invite you to make that change and to let me know what it is. And immediately Owl was doing what owls do and raising the wings and saying, pick me, pick me, I know what I want, I know what I want. And the creator said to the owl, no, not right now. And the owl sort of stepped behind the creator, looking a little dejected. And the owl, and the creator turned to the rabbit and said, rabbit, what do you want? And the rabbit said, I know, I know exactly what I want. You see, fox chases me all the time. And at that point, when the creator first made the rabbit, the creator made the rabbit with little ears and four equal-sized legs. And rabbit said, please make me faster because fox is always chasing me. And the creator said, okay, I think I can do that. And the creator said to all the other creatures around, I need you to cover your eyes because I don't want any of you to see what I'm doing. Well, Owl, who was behind creator, took the wings and did one of these things. So, Owl could see. Uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter what you say and do. There is always that person who just needs to do things their own way and invariably brings out trouble. And so you know something's not going to go right here. Well, the creator begins to do what the creator does and starts pulling on the back legs of of a rabbit and extending them and making them longer. And for some reason or other, as the creator is doing this, rabbit's ears are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And creator thinks, well, no big deal, I'll, I'll fix this at the end. But suddenly from behind, there is this, oh! And the creator turns and looks at Owl and says, Owl! And does one of these things and... The creator's 
and hits the owl's head and squashes it right down. Did you notice that the owl had one of these things like this? Before that, the owl had a nice, beautiful, long neck. Well, the owl was rather shocked. And the eyes got big and round because what's the Lord going to do? What's the Creator going to do? And the Creator said, what did I tell you to do? Why did you have to look? No, just, I was curious, I was curious. And the Creator said, owl, owl, I'm sorry. Um, you're in trouble with me. Um, from now on, you're going to have to go like this because your head is now stuck in that position. And Owl's eyes never got smaller. They always stayed big and open and around. And the Creator went on and said, and, and Owl, from now on, you will fly at night and eat at night. And during the light of the day, you won't be seen. And that's been true to this day, and that's why you know that this was a true story about one who was doing what one ought not to do. And then the Creator stood up and turned around and looked at Rabbit. But Rabbit was gone. Because Rabbit had been startled by what the Creator had done and had leaped up and run away. And so to this day, Rabbit has nice long ears and two funny looking back legs. But Rabbit can run. Well, so goes the stories. And invariably, as Native Americans would tell their stories, the stories would have morals in them, and other stories have more better morals than these. But um, it would also explain what the world is all about in a curious way. But in and through all is always the sense of the sacred being present. Because the sacred is always present. And in just a moment, you're going to hear the sound of the sacred flowing in and through the whole of life. So come, my friends from the choir. Come and join me and let the sacred flow out into the cosmos.
as we begin to transition towards time of prayer, I would draw your attention to new conflicts in the world, particularly in Israel. Eternal Spirit, we ask for your life-giving presence to be with the whole of creation. Help us to appreciate the legacy of the earth you created, but also to lay the groundwork so that future generations may also benefit. We are reminded that all is cherished by you. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We find ourselves thinking about adventurers and explorers, the Christopher Columbuses of the world, as well as the Abraham and Sarahs. We also think about all kinds of individuals. Watch over them as they stretch the boundaries of what is known. We pray for displaced people. We especially think about the indigenous peoples of this land who were uprooted, had their ancestral lands taken, customs repressed, and way of life changed. Bring your resilience and healing. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for individuals and communities who are in need. Hear us as we name them in our hearts and call out first names with our lips. Give to each one the healing they need. Grant wisdom to our leaders, reminding each one that they are in a unique position to help make for a better world, and that you are the creator of us all. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let us know peace, for as long as the moon shall rise, for as long as the rivers shall flow, for as long as the sun shall rise, shine, for as long as the grass shall grow, let us know peace. May all I say and all I think be in harmony with thee, God within me, God beyond me, maker of the trees. Hold on to what is good, even if it is a handful of earth. Hold on to what you believe, even if it is a tree that stands by itself. Hold on to what you must do, even if it is a long way from here. Hold on to life, even when it's easier letting go. Hold on to my hand, even when I have gone away from you. May the sun bring you new energy by day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow new strength into your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. 
As I walk, as I walk, the universe is walking with me. In beauty, it walks before me. In beauty, it walks behind me. In beauty, it walks below me. In beauty, it walks above me. Beauty is on every side. As I walk, I walk with beauty. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen.